Today on This Week Health. I remember it was PAX related. The first question out of his mouth was, hey, we need to buy a new PAX system and I don't really know how to do this. My brain almost broke for a second. This is CMIO. They work with the EMRs. They know all of this backwards and forwards. It was that level of honesty and it changed my approach. Welcome to This Week Health Community. This is Town Hall, a show hosted by leaders on the front lines with interviews of people making things happen in healthcare with technology. My name is Bill Russell, the creator of This Week Health, a set of channels designed to amplify great thinking to propel healthcare forward. We want to thank our show sponsors, Olive, Rubric, Trellix, Medigate, and F5 in partnership with Sirius Healthcare for investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. Now, on to our show. Hello, and welcome to Town Hall. My name is Lee Milligan, and I'm your host today. I'm the CIO for a health system in Southern Oregon. Today, we're pleased to have Kyle Gibson with us. Kyle works for AGFA. He's a director at AGFA, but he's been in imaging for many years. Kyle? Yes, I've been with AGFA for 18 months. I do sales across the central US, and prior to that, Work for Change Healthcare, used to work for Siemens. So I've done the IT side, sold MRIs, CTs, ultrasounds. So quite a few different products on the imaging side over the last, since 2013, nine years. Awesome. So today we're going to attempt to do something a little bit different. So Kyle and I are actually not in business together. We don't have a contract. We don't currently do business, but he and I are kind of friends. We met on LinkedIn and we've connected through Hymns and Chime and LinkedIn and email and whatnot over the last few years. And we thought it might be interesting to have a conversation about how to navigate our new world we find ourselves in as it relates to the vendor and the CIO trying to work together. We both recognize that it's a different world and we're trying to kind of sort out that different world. And we're really trying to make a scenario where it's a win-win for both sides. So today is really discussion around what's current state and how do we optimize that? So Kyle, let's start with some basic questions and I'll actually get all four questions out at once, so folks watching can get a sense for whether it makes sense to keep listening. The first is, how has the vendor-CIO interaction changed as a result of the pandemic? The second is, what are today's current challenges that didn't exist before? The third is, what are companies doing to cross the divide within this new ecosystem? And lastly, what are some ideas around how to improve this to the benefit of both the vendor and the CIO? So let's start with that first one. How have things changed since the pandemic? From your perspective. Uh, well, it greatly, Lee. And I, I look back to March of 2020, I was at 17 flights year to date when COVID hit. And you going wow. back to previous 10 or 11 years, I averaged anywhere from 90 to 120 flights a year. So I always had territories of up to two states, sometimes 20 states, depending on how it would go when folks are leaving or you change positions at companies. And so overnight, I still remember the last meeting I did before COVID hit was in Casper, Wyoming, because I was in San Diego the week before, flew home. I was like, well, I can go to Casper. There's no way this is going to be in Casper. Drove out to Casper, had a great meeting over there. And during our time in Casper, I was with one more rep. You get the company wide email of everybody needs to go home right now. Like wow. time to go home for the next two weeks, which I still love that how the initial deal was for, you know, the next two weeks, we're going to yeah, stop the sure. curve and everything. And so I made some poor decisions for those two weeks, but I had a very good time. But then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is still going on. This is yeah. there and it really changes. I mean, one of the biggest things I look at is previously I used to do, I would just call it the bagel run. So if I'm going mm -hmm. out to go see you in Medford, like I said, we hadn't met in person yet at that time. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, Hey, I'm going to Corvallis, Eugene, Medford, a couple other hospitals in Southern Oregon. And I'd let you know three to four weeks in advance. Hey, I'm coming by. Can I do breakfast with the team, lunch with the team? Don't know much about your facility. So we'd start out that way, just trying to find a way to get a meeting. And in 2020, you could do that because the IT department that no one was making hiring decisions remotely. And all of a sudden now, two years later, it's flipped. And I know Asante, I'll hire out of 12 states. One of the other hospital systems, their Peace Health, I think they have 285 IT employees and only 40 are on site now. Mm -hmm. So even if I stop by with a box of bagels over there, I'm going to drop two off and be taking 11 home for myself. So you just... Like what you used to do that was successful just won't work because no one's there anymore. So what else would you do in the old days in terms of interacting with either existing customers or new customers? A lot of it, like 80% of sales to me has always been simply showing up and finding out what was going on. 
So whether it was selling an MRI, a VNA pack system or the trauma, which that was my original, like back from 2009 to 13, mm -hmm. I was in the trauma industry. You'd go make a contact at the hospital and try to find out what's going on. You ask, hey, can y'all walk me around, go to different departments, like in the IT side. If I start out with IT, I always joke with everybody that that's typically where deals go to die. If you're looking to get a no, IT is a great place to start. And then once you get to IT, it's like, okay, well, where's the need? Do they need to see me there? I'm selling something that's usually seven digits. Are there issues with radiology? Is there something, an interventional that we can go do? Is there something, are there archiving issues? What is the problem? And you can find that out a lot better when you're in person because you get to shoot the bull with people. It's okay. awkward whenever you're trying to do it via Zoom calls because everyone's just staring at each other like a Brady Bunch style meeting. And at the end of the day, you don't know people's kids' names. You don't know if they like sports or anything along the line. Like the usual topics that are important to sales. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. And I imagine as you get to know people, you get to understand the decision-making framework that's in place within that system. So do they have a PMO? Who's in charge of imaging? Who leads the imaging strategy? Who are the key players in this space? Because frequently those decisions are made either in conjunction with IT or sometimes external to IT, depending on, on how it's framed up for the organization. So, okay, so the pandemic hits and this world is turned upside down, can no longer walk the halls and kind of learn people's scenarios. And you can't drop by bagels and have a conversation. So what did you do? The first thing I did is I got onto LinkedIn like I've never really been before. So I've used LinkedIn, I've probably been on it since 2010 or 11. Mm -hmm. But I finally started to use it. And the first thing I did was started to find people that were having webinars or talking about topics. And oftentimes it was COVID related at first. And then I found more and more that were IT related. So join the meeting, take some notes on that. And at first, I don't mind saying I did it wrong. I'd see something out there, a CIO would post something and I'd get real excited. So I'd go out, reach out, connect. Then we'd connect and I'd immediately, Hey, we could do this and this and this for you, which as I've learned from using LinkedIn a lot, like it's kind of better to take it slow, like a first day. You're not out there just going nuts for your very first meeting. And that's, I look at it now, I probably get five to 10 requests on LinkedIn where someone's pitching me something immediately. So I went deep on utilizing LinkedIn, joining webinars, and then finding out who really sounded like they knew what they were doing and I'd want to engage with. So mm -hmm. from sales, I'm always trying to figure out, obviously I've got my products I've got to sell, but I can't come pitch you on products if I don't know the first thing about your systems. Like if I was going into Asante, I should probably do my homework on how long Epic's been the EMR, how long you've had Fuji packs. Cause if I walk in there excited to talk to you about packs, you're like, well, Kyle, we signed a contract for five years, three months ago. <laughs> then it's okay, well, let's have lunch and I'm going to go and get out of here. So it made it tough. You know, when it was remote, you lost those abilities to have those easy conversations and you're doing it via email, doing it via LinkedIn. And I also recognized I was competing with two to 300 plus vendors, just like me per mm -hmm. account. So then I had to figure out how am I going to get through when everybody else is trying to relate the same way. I wanted to take a moment and share our next webinar, Patient Room Next, Improving Care Efficiency. The patient room is evolving inside and outside of the four walls of your health system. What is coming next to improve clinical effectiveness through technology? with guests from health systems from around the country. We will discuss machine vision, ambient listening, AI, care companions, and much more. Before the webinar, check out the briefing campaigns being released on our channel. Now, as we speak, conversations with leaders from Monument Health and our Mountain Healthcare, and, and they're just gonna build the excitement for this webinar conversation we're having on September 29th. You can find these episodes and register for the webinar at our website, thisweekhealth.com. Just look at the top right-hand corner. We have upcoming webinars right there in the top right. So love to have you join us. Please check it out. Now back to our show. Right, that makes perfect sense. Let me pause here for a second. I'm gonna give you my perspective on some of these elements as well. I was thinking before this meeting, what are some of the things that work well and I'm skipping around a little bit, my apologies. That's all right. What are some of the things that actually work well? Because you and I have joked about the mistake that a CIO will make of accepting a LinkedIn request. And then the very next message is 18 pages long. And you just say, okay, enough. I want nothing to do with that. Yeah, That's you a get really common entity. Yeah, you get disconnected like two minutes later. And there's people go over and do it again and again. So, I mean, what I've found that's been successful on it is like when I reached out to you, the first thing I saw, it was an article about you delivering a baby in a parking lot. 
And I've worked with a lot of CIOs. I didn't realize at the time you had an emergency medicine background. So I was just kind of chuckling. I was like, oh, what went wrong to deliver a baby in a snowstorm in Oregon, which they don't get a lot of snow there anyway, in a parking lot. So it's like, well, that's kind of interesting. I'm going to reach out. I just got to ask about that one. Yeah. And then I remember we connected. You let me know you had a background in emergency medicine. And again, I sold a device that did a liter of blood a minute back on the body. So I know from ERs, gunshot wounds, stabbings, car wrecks, they're great at those things. If someone's going into labor in the ER, I mean, they try to find a turbo rocket to get them to open <laughs> They want nothing to do with that. It's kind of hilarious. The first few times I saw that, I was like, what are you doing? They're like, it's a delivering baby. Get him out of here. It's like, we're the emergency room. Like, no, not that. You know, take him to the next floor or whatever it is. So I think you tapped into something there for sure. So let me yeah. go back to a couple of things that I think do work, at least from my perspective. The first is if I get a reference from a trusted colleague. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to Peace Health. Peace Health has a CIO by the name of Will Weeder. He's one of my personal heroes. He's a terrific CIO and I love his leadership style, very thoughtful in how he approaches things. If he says, Lee, I've been doing business with X company for three years now, and I've had a terrific experience, it's great value. And here are the three reasons why I've had a great experience. I am going to look at that, right? Absolutely. So, so from a vendor perspective, I think it's really important to know, not just your clientele but know who knows who within that clientele. Network. Absolutely. I think that's kind of a key thing. The second you alluded to this around developing the relationship, I liked your analogy of it's like dating, right? You're not getting married on the first date, right? It's yep. really about getting to know one another a little bit. And that's one thing I really appreciated about our communications back and forth and kind of just getting to know one another and then eventually meeting up at, was it Chime Fall Forum? I yeah, can't it remember. Was Chime. It was one yeah. of like the first meetings. I can't remember if we had to wear masks at Chime or not. I don't think we did. In yeah. October of 2021. So I remember, uh, yeah, running to you was just in the hallway yep. at the hotel. I just checked in. Yeah. And it, it's always one of my running jokes. I'm like, hey, like Dr. Milligan actually looks like his LinkedIn picture. Yeah. Because there's so many out there with like 20 <laughs> years old. They're like, mine, I look a little skittier than I am in this photo. Here, yes. So I need to update <laughs> lunch. The, the reason that this struck me is that I remember a few years back, I ended up connecting with a gentleman by the name of Aaron Brown, who worked for a company called Huron mm -hmm. Consulting. And uh, he did a really good job of trying to understand the Asante space, the situation, the problems we were trying to solve. He asked really good questions. It was a really good listener. And it reminded me of you in that way. And I remember thinking afterwards, if I have a need that Huron does, I'm going to go to Huron, yeah. right? Because I felt like there was a point person within that realm that really took the time to understand our circumstance. And it's interesting how that works, right? You think it should all be about dollars and cents and expertise and all that stuff. But really, if you get a human in place who takes the time to understand the individuals they're going to inter interact with, it makes yeah. such a difference. It really um, does. And, and like, that's the single biggest thing. Obviously in sales, you've always got a number you have to hit. So there's an expectation of you're going to sell a certain amount per year. You mentioned Will at Peace Health. By the way, he's a great follow on Twitter. He's pretty hilarious on there. So, but if you can get to that reference or referability point, that's huge because that makes it so much easier to go into a system. If so-and-so says like, hey, this guy's all right, or this company has done well by us for years, it's a heck of a lot easier than just coming in. Because I also accept like the market we're in, PAX, Enterprise Imaging, v &A, it's a completely established market. Right. So we're either replacing a competitor or being replaced by a competitor. So it's one of those, like, there's very cool things that we do, but it's so tricky from your side because you hear the terms like enterprise imaging, artificial intelligence, interoperability, like it makes your hair go gray because everybody yep. throw these terms, they throw all the terms around. But then you ask the question, you're like, great, what does that mean to you? You'll get 20 wildly different answers from people. Where yeah. So, so well said, so well said. <laughs> I, the third part I wanted to make is around honesty. So one of the things that a vendor can do when I'm interacting with them, that really makes me want to keep talking to them is to have them tell me what they can't do. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'm dealing with an issue. I've got a problem at some level. And they say to me, you know what? That's not something that we're going to be able to solve. But we know folks in that space, happy to kind of point you in that direction, but we don't want to waste your time because we're not really there or plan to go there. When they come forward with that level of honesty and transparency, when they do tell me they can solve a problem, I tend to believe them, right? Yeah. Because they've already told me something that, you know, where they can't do something. So that piece helps. And then last, I want to go back to the idea of kind of listening. I feel like how they always say like all politics is local. 
-hmm. all health systems operations are local, despite the fact that we have standard products out there, how it's implemented, how it's utilized and leveraged in a local scenario is key. And so yeah. when I interact with a vendor and a vendor really tries to understand the operational workflow that we're trying to optimize first before laying around the technology, that helps me get a sense that that individual really has their best interest in mind. Yeah. And a lot of what you're saying, it's the key. Like, and I, and I can use this example, this is back when I used to work for Toshiba. We had a R&F room and it had a 370 pound, maybe 375 pound dynamic table limit. So if the table was moving, it could only work up to 375 pounds, which in Japan is spectacular. But in the US, our folks are a little bit bigger and all the competition had 550 pound table limits. So I remember the lady's name was Renee Ward. She's now the CEO of Pinrad Imaging in Colorado Springs. She was a rad director at the time for one of the hospitals in Colorado Springs. I remember we're going into a deal, starting, it's gonna be a nine month deal. You know, hey, we're looking at this, like, look, real quick, I have a 375 pound dynamic table weight limit. You're gonna find that out at some point. I'd rather tell you right now, is that gonna work for your community? And wow. I remember she was like, thank you. She's like, no, it won't. But now we don't have, I was like, I don't want to waste nine months bringing people down to Colorado Springs, doing meeting after meeting, and you're going to have spreadsheets of every single capability everyone has, knowing that that was probably going to eliminate me anyway. And it was funny because she and I, we don't do business currently, but she's referenced that a few times as we've talked through the years, because she was like, hey, like, you're one of the guys that you didn't waste our time. I love <laughs> you it. Came in their first meeting, like, look. You want to talk CT, which we came in second on that project over there. Maybe I needed to be a better sales rep at that time, <laughs> but it was just, it, it's funny when you do the right thing for your customers, they'll even tell your friends. So like when I come to how I've grown my opportunities, a little over half my funnel is now via LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So from a company standpoint, they don't obviously they pay my salary, but you're not paying outside marketing. You're not paying in different areas. And I had a call that came in and this was December of 20. It was from a CMIO. And I remember it was PAX related. So I'm just super excited. Mm -hmm. They want to look at PAX. And the first question out of his mouth was, hey, we need to buy a new PAX system. And I don't really know how to do this. And mm -hmm. I remember sitting there and it, my brain almost broke for a second. Cause I was like, this is CMIO. They work with the EMRs. They know all of this backwards and forwards. And it was that level of honesty and it changed my approach. Cause then I realized I'm going out, I'm talking bits, bytes, widgets, all this stuff that really nobody cares about versus what seems to be the problem. And so like, where can we come in and fix it? And more and more nowadays, I see it on the vendor neutral archive plus universal viewer. Cardiology is a great example. Folks keep buying systems. They're now recording all the surgeries mm -hmm. in cardiology. So those files are not small. You know, at that time, it's not an image from a CT or MRI. So you've got DICOM rat versus it's a nine DICOM. And that's been such a great entry point just to talk to folks about, Hey, if you're doing this, what are you doing with the files? How are they getting to the right place? Or even more that we right. deal with all the time on my side of the business is if the radiologist clicks the button, they expect the image up in front of them immediately, not a half a second later. And if it's a half a second later, that's usually not great at some places. So mm -hmm. it's funny when you, <laughs> if you're proactive and you address it that way. You could have a hell of a lot more luck because let's say I was doing business with Asante. When I get to your level, you're not going to care about the bits and bytes and where a widget is and where you click on everything. It's, is it going to work across my system? Mm -hmm. What's the support? If something goes wrong, which in full disclosure, this is just me in sales. Like there's no such thing as a perfect install. Mm -hmm. Most all folks, when stuff goes wrong and it will judge us on the response. So yeah. when you're able to call me or call your team, how do we handle your challenges and problems? Because if you do oh. it right. I want, to, I, want to go, I want to go back to what you were saying about that CMIO who called you up, because I do think as we think about strategies to be effective in this space moving forward from the vendor side, I do think education is a really important element of this because the complexity associated with healthcare IT today is so vast mm -hmm. and so layered, and so complicated. I feel like that's a role that a good vendor who is also has kind of a teaching ability, have that teaching thread in their psyche, can share things with folks. And the more you teach and the more that individual learns, essentially the, the more they learn to trust you as well moving forward. So I do think teaching is a key element. It's very true. And here's where we really struggle with it remotely. You and I know each other, we've developed a good relationship. But a lot of other folks that are coming in, again, like I mentioned the buzzwords of enterprise imaging, AI, same thing you'll hear, oh, it's a consultative approach. It's a partnership we're going to do. It's like my kids' names. Like, where did I go to college? Yeah. And you're like, what state am I from? Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't know any of those. Like, and now we're talking about partnership. Really? 
And it's like, yeah. we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. You can earn it. It just simply takes time. And that's where it's tough for organizations because you can't just flip it on tomorrow and then all of a sudden have that. Like if you had a product you were selling that it's only a one-time use or something, that would absolutely work. But IT yep. relationships, we are going to be married to each other for usually three to five year contracts mm -hmm. when we start together. And if it's not going well, you know, I always tell folks, hey, week one has to go well. We've got to be on site. We're going to address the challenges, concerns, and what we can do to make it better. Because if week one goes poorly, weeks two to 52 aren't very fun. Yeah. Like if week <laughs> one goes well, you can have a very good existence. And this is where it's going to change so much moving forward because again, your team is not all there anymore. We've done a couple different installs and we've done completely remote, which stuff that if someone would have told you that at the start of 2020, you'd be like, oh yeah, oh, idiot. like no one would ever do that. But now we've been able to do it. And my thought is that it's going to move forward. Let's just take the Asante team. You might fly them all out to Medford two or three times a year, get everybody together so we can do stuff. And I think vendors are now going to try to come out on those sponsor dinner, sponsor a happy hour, find a way to get in front of people, but it's going to be tough because it's a free for all of vendors once again. So you're not going to invite every right. single person's ever called you to come out there, but it's like, Hey, who are the five or 10 folks that we want to talk to? Because you've got the challenge. I believe y'all are about 1.1 billion in annual revenue. Mm -hmm. of what are you going to do? And the capital budget, it's changed so much through the years. You'd win or lose to other vendors sometimes, but now I'm seeing more and more hospitals with the capital budget that projects are getting pushed off wages. They've gone mm -hmm. significantly higher, finding techs, finding nurses, burnout, retention. There's so many different areas that are going into budgets where it hasn't been before. And everybody's trying to adapt to the new ones. I know when I'm calling on you or other customers, generally your biggest issue is often, are we able to retain employees? Do we have folks where they need to be? And those are the things like when the nursing aspect, from the radiologist aspect, from the tech aspect, those well, are huge. Let so. me go back to what you were saying before about coming on site. Let me make a suggestion, something to think about. I think there's value in that, but I also think there's value in flying the customer or having the customer fly to your headquarters mm -hmm. to meet with your staff. Prior to the pandemic, I sat down with my leadership team and I wanted to define what I called our core vendors. Ultimately it became a list of vendors that I really have a good relationship with, that we take significant product and services from, and that we have dependencies with them to some degree. And once we defined those, then the goal was to identify whether we could move into a true partnership with them or if it would remain transactional. Yeah. And as I thought about that and kind of thought through that, I started talking to some of these vendors and the first vendor I spoke to was Microsoft. And Microsoft at the time asked me to come up to Redmond and present the Asante ITS strategy, three to five year strategy moving forward to their executive healthcare team. Mm -hmm. So I flew up there, spent the day with them. It was supposed to be a 30 minute presentation, turned into an hour and 45 minutes with Q&A up there. And then they had an opportunity to kind of showcase where they thought things were going. At the time, they were focused on Teams and a few other things, and Azure yeah. and a few other things that we focused on. It was a really great meeting. It was, to this day, it's a couple of years later, it's still fresh in my memory of how that happened. So I would say with certain individuals and customers, bringing them on site, having them present to you where their head is, you can learn about that, and then you can present to them where you're headed as an organization can really be impactful. First off, I really like that idea. I, I'd be bad at sales, but I didn't invite you out to Greenville, <laughs> South Carolina for that one real quick. Or Belgium, if we're allowed to go overseas for it. But again, very different thinking. It's not something I've done before, but you can see the light bulb in my head's kind of going off on it. Because if we have the right folks there, and from us, I'm looking at product development, mm -hmm. innovation, service, you can have a lot of the folks there to hear from a customer. Because it's, yeah. I'm sure you've seen it through the years. When some companies come out with certain things, you're like, well, why'd you pick that? Yeah. And like, well, you know, R&D said we wanted to do it. It's like, who from R&D said we needed something that's going to get used once a year versus something that, you know, is it applicable to our customers? Which, yeah, that's a great idea. I like yeah, that. One more last, last thought on this. And I, I want to give you the last word because I want to hear any additional thoughts you might have on how we can kind of optimize this vendor CIO relationship in this mm -hmm. world we're in. Yeah. But the last idea I was going to put out there is this concept of an advisory council. Mm -hmm. You probably already have one, but I think it's really important for companies that do business with healthcare systems to put together an advisory council that consists of representation from a variety of different clients they have, 
who can meet on a, let's say, quarterly basis, hopefully in person, but if not virtually, who can really provide feedback on a regular cadence about what's happening with their use of the product. And they can generate the genesis of ideas about how to make it better moving forward. I've done this on a number of occasions with Halo Health before they were acquired by Simpler. I currently am on the advisory council for Galen Health, which is a, a legacy data archive. It's a terrific relationship. It's a true partnership that we have mm. with Galen. I've been really, really pleased with that. And then I get a chance to give back to them and hear from them about where they're headed at the same time. And so it really helps put in place tangible ways that that so-called partnership can actually evolve and be there. But I want to give you the last word. Again, great idea on that. And I know overall, we're talking about how to make it different, do different things that other people aren't doing in order to be successful in sales. And that's a lot of what I've just tried to figure out on it. Whether it's, we know we're going to trade shows and people are presenting. Most folks don't go through the 250 different presentations that are going on and the topics there. They're usually as fun as watching grass grow for the most part for the general public. But occasionally, like you see a few topics that you really want to see. And I still remember one. This is again, that Chime meeting in San Diego on October 21. It was Aaron Meary. He's out of Baptist, I think in Jacksonville now. He's previously yeah. at Austin and Will Weeders. And again, you always get a good moment where you learn something. They were on stage for a presentation. Will had just gotten pulled up to join the panel because somebody else couldn't make it. And they were talking about applications. They're like, hey, we have 1,400 applications at our hospital or 1,500. We want to get down to a thousand. The last oh, thing yeah. we want is more vendors coming on with X, Y, Z. We're trying to figure out how to pare it down. And with Agfa, I was like, wait, that's our messaging. But then I was like, well, where do I have that messaging? And it's okay. I need to do a better job getting that out there to people. But yeah, it's just finding ways to reach out. My joke is like, Hey, whether you want it to be LinkedIn, text message, smoke signal, email, regular mail, I don't care if I can do all those ways over there. Probably not smoke signal, but they're just finding a way to communicate and connect. And once you do it, it goes back to the old sales 101 of people buy from people. So if they like you, if they trust you, they believe you and you've paid attention, you've shown how you can add value, you can do stuff. But the other big thing on that is when you hit on it early, just know when to walk away. If you're ultimately the wrong fit to say, Hey guys, somebody might be able to do this better than us. And yeah. or if it's referred to another area. Cause I still get questions all the time based on my modality background from folks like, Hey, we're looking to buy an MRI or CT. What do we do? What's the best way to do that? And it's kind of funny cause I can nerd out on the equipment, service engineers, uptime and stuff that usually bore most people to death. But to me, it's thankfully I enjoy what I do, <laughs> but no, I appreciate getting on here on the time and hope I did well for the first one of these I've ever done. Yeah, you, you did great. I really appreciate your approach to the whole vendor CIO relationship. And I'm sure this will be the first of many conversations that we'll have on this ongoing topic. Thanks, looking, Kyle. Hey, looking forward to it. Thanks again, Dr. Milligan. All right. Take care. Bye. I really love this show. I love hearing from people on the front lines. I love hearing from these leaders. And we want to thank our hosts who continue to support the community by developing this great content. We also want to thank our show sponsors, Olive, Rubric, Trellix, Medigate, and F5 in partnership with Sirius Healthcare for investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. If you want to support the show, let someone know about our shows. They all start with This Week Health, and you can find them wherever you listen to podcasts. There's Keynote, Town Hall, and Newsroom. Check them out today, and thanks for listening. That's all for now. Hey.